me on a treasure hunt I long for something new Have you heard the fairies when they sing and dance? Oh, I wish it was me Every night Hi everyone, I'm Marie from Southern Country Living and today I'm cooking barbecue ribs in the crock pot and Calvin you're cooking. I'm going to be showing everyone how to make my homemade barbecue sauce and that's something I've been making for a long time. It's a pretty simple recipe but uh, it really is good. And why are you doing this today making your sauce? Well you made a recipe a couple of weeks ago and you were using my homemade barbecue sauce and several people wanted to see how I made it. Okay. And I've actually showed how I made this once before a couple of years ago, mm -hmm. but that was uh, just a short video. So we're going to do it this time with some good country style barbecue ribs. Yeah, and I really enjoy your sauce too. So I think if everybody else starts making it, they'll see how good it is. Yeah, everybody else likes it too. Usually when I make it, uh, I make enough to put into mason jars uh, one quart at a time. And uh, my son-in-law, or my grandson-in-law, he likes to get a whole quart of it because <laughs> he really loves it. But, okay, Marie, we'll let you get started on the ribs, okay. and I'll step by you way here for a minute. Okay, I'm going to put some salt on them. You can do both sides if you, if you want to. I'm just doing one side. salt and black pepper. So now I'm going to put some paprika. Okay. I think I'm going to get a paper towel. Okay. Rub this in a little bit. I've got a brush, but I think a paper towel will do better. Okay, so now I'm going to put them in my crock pot. And I'm going to put just a little bit of water in here. I'm going to be cooking these on um, high for three to four hours, or you can cook it on low on um, seven hours. We uh, got those ribs on sale yesterday when we went to Piggly Wiggly. They had them for just $1.69 a pound. I guess that was a good special for uh, July 4th coming up. Yeah, and this is, you know, if you don't want to barbecue them or if you don't want to cook them in the oven just cook them in the crock pot and it's um i don't think that needs to go <laughs> and um i like doing it that way excuse me my voice is getting raspy <laughs> okay this is going to be a really big crock pot full and these are boneless ribs. Okay, so now I'm going to put some of Calvin's barbecue sauce on. You order to um, bottle this and sell it, Calvin. <laughs> I'm going to start these cooking on high and Calvin's going to come over here and show you how to make the barbecue sauce. Okay, Marie's got the ribs already started cooking in the crock pot 
So I'm going to show you how I do my homemade barbecue sauce. And it's a, like I said, it's a pretty simple recipe. I'm going to be using dark brown sugar. And uh, you can use the light brown, but I prefer the dark brown. I think it makes it look better. I'm going to be using ketchup, mustard, apple cider vinegar. And I'm also going to be using some Worcestershire sauce and some Texas peat hot sauce. And so, uh, let me go ahead and get started. This is just a basic recipe for one um, mixture of this. I'm using one cup of brown sugar. And then I'm going to use a cup of uh, ketchup. Probably should have done had this measured out, should <laughs> If you get a little bit too much, it won't hurt anything, or if you don't get enough, it'll be all right. Just won't get it pretty close. Okay, one cup of ketchup. Okay, then I'm gonna use one cup of apple cider vinegar. So basically it's just one cup of each ingredient. And if you don't want to be quite as strong with the vinegar taste, you can cut down on the vinegar. But it seems like everybody in our family likes the vinegar taste. And so we go ahead and go with the cup of it. Okay. On the mustard, I usually use, for just a single mixture, I use two tablespoons of mustard. And you can measure it out or you can just squirt it in there. And I pretty much know how much it takes, so I'm going to squirt some in there. <laughs> the little bottle makes a little noise, do not it? Okay, there's one. Okay, there's two tablespoons of mustard. Then on the Worcestershire sauce, I only put about one tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce and about that much right there. The Texas peat, now you can leave this out, you don't have to put that in there, but this does give it a hot taste to it and you've already got sweet taste and a vinegar taste, but I'm going to put about one teaspoon of the Texas peat in there. And I will be careful with this. I don't want to put too much because Marie and I, we like it a little hot, but we don't want it to be too hot for us. Okay, there it is. That's one teaspoon of the Texas peat hot sauce. Okay, you just want to take this mixture and just go ahead and whisk it all together real good. And next step I'm going to do, I'm going to have to reset my camera over here, but I'm going to put this on the oven, on the eye, and I'm going to go ahead and bring it up to a boil. And what you want to do is you want to bring it to a boil, then reduce it to a simmer. You want to let it simmer for at least five minutes. But if the longer you let it simmer, the thicker your barbecue sauce will be. So I'll probably end up going about 15 minutes on this one. You can go as long as 30 minutes if you want to. But let me move this over here to the oven and set my camera up and we'll be right back with you. Okay, this is almost coming to a boil. And what you want to do is keep a good close eye on it and keep it steered because you don't want it to stick to your pan. It's looking good. And I'm going to turn it down on a low simmer. And I'm just going to let it sit here and simmer for about 15 minutes. And then we'll test it and see how it looks. Oh, 
Okay, this has been cooking now for 15 minutes on a low simmer. And uh, it, you can tell it is starting to thicken up some. I could go ahead and cook it for uh, 30 minutes if I wanted it real thick. But this is going to be good for us. So what I'm going to do now, let me turn my timer off. Turn this off. I'm going to set this over here and um, give it a good steer. Sure does look good. It smells really good. Yeah, I'm loving how it smells. What I'm going to do, I'm going to get me a little spoonful just to taste it. But it's boiling hot right now, so I'm not going to taste it for just a few seconds. But I'm going to put it in this little plastic uh, barbecue uh, salt squirt bottle. I think we bought these at Walmart, didn't we, Marie? We yeah, found them on, found them up there one day and we bought several. Uh, I'm going to let this cool for probably 15 to 30 minutes. Just let it cool down real good. And then after it cools, I'll show you how you can pour the barbecue sauce in here without making a big mess. And so uh, let's see if, it's, if I can taste this yet. Definitely hot. Oh yeah, I taste it. Mmm, that's real good. Real thick, that's the way we like it. So, mmm, uh, got plenty of vinegar in it. <laughs> okay, so let me just sit here about 30 minutes and I'll come back and show you how to put it in the bottle without making a mess. The ribs are still cooking. It's going to be this afternoon before they'll be ready. And uh, when we get ready for our supper tonight, We'll plate it all up and show you how it looks. Okay, I'm back now. My barbecue sauce has cooled off real good. And what I'm going to do, uh, I use a heavy glass. Take my little squirt jar and put it in there. And then I'll use a funnel and just pour it in. So I don't know if you can tell how thick it is, but look how thick that barbecue sauce is. That looks real good. But that's a good way to pour it in without spilling any of it. And there's a little bit left over here. We'll put that in something else. But like I said, now if you wanted to make uh, more than just one container of it, what you do is double the recipe or triple or however much you want to make at one time. So let our uh, barbecue ribs get finished cooking this evening and we'll plate us up a plate of food. All right, I'm back in my barbecue ribs cooked on high for three hours. So they've been on warm for a little while now. So I'm ready to plate up our food. Well, I'm definitely ready. <laughs> How many ribs you want, Calvin? I, I want three ribs, Marie. Okay. Hopefully that they won't, one hopefully fell they won't break too bad. <laughs> These are boneless ribs, so they're going to come apart real easy, and that's okay. Okay, this is the part of this one. Okay, while well, Marie's plating up the uh, food for us, I'm going to go over here and operate the camera. Okay, Marie? Okay. Boy, they sure did smell good, Calvin. Don't tell anyone, but I sampled one about an hour ago, and it sure was good. <laughs> Oops. One thing about it, too, this, uh, these ribs were fairly budget-friendly. So if you've got a big family and you want to cook some ribs for the 4th of July. So now I'm going to put my baked potato over here. So I think I'll put that right there. And I'll put some sour cream on it. I've already put butter on it. Okay. 
Let's put some bacon bits on it. some pasta salad. All right. Now then I'm going to put some of Kevin's good barbecue sauce on it. We're having ribs and pasta salad and baked potato. Okay, so I'm gonna put some of this. Okay. So now I'll do the taste test. They're very tender. That piece didn't get no barbecue sauce in on it. So let me put some on it. Mmm. <laughs> this is delicious. <laughs> Best ribs I made. <laughs> and that barbecue sauce is delicious. Okay. So we're fixing to have this good meal, and so um, y'all do what you love and love what you do, and I'll see you on the next video. Bye! You say take me on a treasure hunt, I long for something new. Have you heard the fairies when they sing and dance? my eyes.